on the camera, maybe yeah. do makeup, maybe do, do the script, maybe do everything. There's so much stuff to do. You should never, the moment you feel that this was not good for me, I don't feel healthy anymore, don't do it again. It's well, like that, cutting your arm. That you might know? be easier said than done for some I know. people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you have to write it down somewhere like this yeah. made me feel really bad. Right. I, yeah. And I need to worry about this. Yeah. And breaking it down too, like what aspect of it made you feel bad? Um, we just watched that, the panel on consent, which was mm -hmm. so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think that, like, you know, and I don't know if this was discussed, but consent is. It's just, it's so loaded because you may think that you like something or you may feel like I'm not that uncomfortable with that. But the way that it's handled on set, all of a sudden you're like, whoa, 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 I wasn't really comfortable with that. With that. But it doesn't really, you don't really process it that way. So you're not necessarily in touch with what was, the, what the issue was in that moment on that set that particular day. So it's a process to figure out what exactly it is that you that your issue that your issue I hate the word issue but it is what it is that's the, problematic or that's triggered, triggered the emotion you. That yeah and that specific day and one thing that I love is journaling but yeah 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 go ahead I love journaling you know like anything that gets you in touch with even what? a happy day especially happy day people yeah. forget to write happy days yeah I know I have to agree with yeah. that. I've been working with a lot of new talent like I I've, I've been doing this for ten years now so I feel like I've gone through my hump and I. I stayed with the industry and I love it. Um, I don't know how to nurture that in new people. Um, all I can do is provide like a, a safe, happy, healthy set for them. But I deal with a lot of people who come to set who already have, they're medicated for anxiety or they have ADHD or they've got depression or they're suicidal. And these are things I don't know as a producer. I just hire a beautiful person. Right. And it comes out on set. It comes out you know, on camera or behind the camera. Um, I'm in a place now where I need a, a resource or uh, I need to be able to say, hey, here's information on how to balance your work and your real life. Or, you know, if you're taking medication that makes you feel this but it kills your libido, this might be not be the right job for you. But the way I've been doing it so far, because I, I don't know what to do, is I'm saying, okay, we're not going to hire you for the next scene because this is a problem. And now I'm the bad guy who just fired you. The problem <laughs> adding to the problem. Yeah, and so I, mm -hmm. things have been escalating and I don't know how to fix that and I don't because I'm not them and I'm not a doctor I don't know what depression um, is like when you have to be medicated I don't know what being suicidal is like right. on set and I'm concerned for the people I'm working with and I don't know how to make it better please give me <laughs> like, I wonder, one answer. I wonder if you like not at your introductory interview, or I don't know how yeah. your hiring process works, but if there's a way for you to have a caveat in there about mental health and or and or history of trauma, because because is that my business to ask? Not your business to ask. I think it would also. I don't think people would answer it honestly because they would be afraid that they wouldn't get. The That's job. the other thing. I got a lot of people um, giving me the right answer. I think just and having not. the communication beforehand to go through. The problem with this like, sometimes is that when we talk about triggers, some people don't know their triggers until something happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, it depends on what data, it depends on the person that you're you're um, performing with. It, it can depend on, on you know, a lot of different aspects. So I think I think the first step is to spend the time to go through every scene in detail. Yeah. And then at least that person knows to to expect what's coming next. Where's the hand gonna go? Where, you know, um, there are always gonna be little bits and pieces that come up, but the communication is. Yeah, the majority of the stuff isn't actually in the scene. It's usually like people, they show up that day and they're like, I'm having a low day. Like, do we do this? Or, yeah. Our highest. And it, 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 it hurts our, you know, our, our, our mates or our teammates. <laughs> I would say I do unsanctioned healing work, energy healing and counseling that's uh, not currently recognized by the laws and so um, I don't have the same restrictions uh, as you would have being licensed as a massage therapist or as a counselor and whatnot. I know there are certain law enforcement compliance issues and, and certain uh, reporting obligations that you all would have if you're going, wearing one of those hats and can you talk about just what you've learned about best practices and ethics around what you, who you have to call if someone says, you know, like what if they're a pedophile? What do you do then? What if you're healing a pedophile and they disclose that to you? 
Do you have to report them to the FBI? Or I mean, there's all kinds of issues that come up when you're dealing with people's issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if whatever you're sanctioned to to report, if you're working with a pedophile and they're actually actively harming children, yes, you absolutely do have to. You do have to report that. But then maybe you have a legal obligation, even as a healthcare professional. At a certain point, when your your patient is putting other people in harm or threatening self harm, at that point, all that for patient confidentiality is on. Right. Is that correct? Yeah, if they're threatening self-harm, then we do need to inform usually a family member, someone that can watch. The goal is to have someone that can watch them um, for 24 to 48 hours, set some sort of plan in place. If there's no one, then we can we can contact, you know, like the local, you know, psychiatric facility. Um, in the situation, if someone threatens to harm someone else, we should inform that person and the police. Problem is, most of the time, people don't talk about it. People who are suicidal or really mean. Um, they, they're gonna tell you people only who are looking for help. And they're not gonna tell a mental health professional that they know has to report them. I mean, it's a tricky position for us because they, I mean, people are like, well, I really want to tell you something, but I can't because you're gonna report me. And I'm right. like, I kind of do have to, and it really puts us in a bind because then people aren't really talking about it. So, the trust, yeah, the trust, the trust yeah. gets yeah, yeah. away. Yeah. I think what we can do though is make the work environment a little bit better for people so they don't become mental. You know, there's so many things we can do as professionals in this business that can ease and, and you know, help everyone. And number one thing is the producers who don't disclose everything that's gonna happen. This is the biggest problem because most of the newcomers, they, they're just too shy to say no or too shy to lose the job or too shy to be thought of that they not a good performer, and a lot of a lot of female and male performers, they go through things they don't necessarily want to do, but they're put on the spot. And you know, this is a big deal because you come back home from a scene that you were not completely comfortable with, there's nothing you can do anymore. You sign the paper, it's out there. Uh, I don't know if everybody was present for the for the discussion on consent, which was really, it, it, got pretty deep and it, there, was a, there was a lot that was really addressed. One of the, the takeaways that I came away with that I really liked the idea of is consent is a moving target. There was a lot of talk about checklists and stuff and talking about activities. And I, I do understand there's that's kind of front of brain, like there's the kind of the front of brain part of us that thinks like if we just check a bunch of boxes, it's all gonna be okay. But every single one of us has had sex that has checked a box that hasn't felt good, right? I mean, it's fine to say, oh, I like this, I like that. And in the moment or for whatever reason, or, I know or whatever, consent is, is constant. It's, it's a good to stop. It's yes. a good to say, I don't like it. Right, and and one of the things, that, one of the things that, we, that they were talking about was the notion of having a pause safe word and a stop safe word. And the King community has yellow and red. I, I, yeah. I, I wish I had kind of brought that up. Because yellow and red is such a beautiful concept, right? Yellow just means like, yeah, I don't like it. Red means we have to, we're stopping now, right? All bets are off, everybody out of the pool. But that also just, no, being able to just tap the gas a little and just say yellow without having everything come crashing down, like it doesn't have to come to that, that point where everybody has to stop and everything, you know, you know the, the, the scene or the, or the, the shoot is um, completely stopped. So that's an idea I, I would just encourage anybody who works in the sex industry to get in touch with that and think of ways that you can say, before I get overwhelmed, before I get that knot in my stomach, before I, I start slipping into these patterns, does require some self-knowledge, right? It does require checking in with yourself and taking responsibility for the way that you feel and saying, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I think I need a breath of fresh air. I think I need a little bit of food. I think I need to just things to slow down a little bit. Um, but it, there's just, it, it, we come from a much more powerful place when we are already taking care of ourselves rather than getting overwhelmed and crashing, right? I don't know how to teach that to people who are new in the biz. I mean, I feel bad that I can't talk to 18 year olds, and I'm sorry they age us, but I'm just saying, I mean. I feel you. I wish it was a class before people, they, before you know, they like, go into the business. The sex industry is a place where a lot of people are learning about themselves really, really fast. Yeah. They're learning about their sexuality, they're learning about their power in the world, and it, the energy can, you know, can just ricochet, right? Because you're young and beautiful, and you get a lot of attention, but at the same time, it can be overwhelming, you don't know how to harness all of that energy coming at you. Yeah, that is, it's, it's tough. And if you don't want to be mama bear to every single one who walks through the door, yeah. that's really, it is really hard. Well, I, 
I mean, uh, they literally call me Mama Bear, but oh, I, <laughs> I don't work sorry, Mom. Is it remedy to stop right now? No, but it's. I know that I don't have the emotional capacity, and you know, we always joke like you're gonna go to Sam for tough love. Kara will give you the soft love, but. It's, I, I don't know how to, I, I mean, it comes from like a drill sergeant dad who's like, this is black, this is white, so I need from you, can you do it or not? And I'm, just, I'm just thinking, for instance, APAC has that great video on yeah. how to start in porn. It's about 15 minutes long, it's got, I don't know, 10 or 15, it's got Stoya and Nina yes. Hartley and a bunch of different people in it. It's at least a place to point people where it feels like it's a, I, I, you know, I've watched it several times where it just like really just kind of breaks it down. Like yeah. this is what you're gonna have to do in order to do this work, and mm. this is what it's gonna like when you feel like a, when we show up on set. It's kind of a primer. I mean, it is at least one resource. Yeah. You know, it's... and people in normal clothes. It's, it's it's like it's very accessible. It's easy to watch. You know what I'm talking about? I don't. About? Okay. Well, yeah. I'm on the APAC website. website. Yeah, yeah, the APAC website is called 101 Porn 101, I believe. Because I've never felt as old as when like, my mother came out of my voice, being like, "Have you eaten today? Have you had a good night's sleep? Did you take your medication?" Yeah. I suddenly feel like my mom's coming at me like, oh dear. Well, yeah, I would say that that's not your responsibility. I do, I want, I do want to piggyback on what you said, Darius, about the, the, the companies, the production companies, sort of being more responsible around um, being real about what what scenes are. I think that the communication is so important when it comes to being able to to sort of access that because what's happening what I'm hearing is what's happening is they get on set and then they're at being asked to do something that they didn't realize that they were gonna have to do and a lot of the triggers well, this time is, 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 is very vague how we get we're gonna have sex vague. it's vague yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. how yeah it's not really explained right. Yeah. right so maybe something along the lines of, of spelling it out I always and I always yeah. say this to clients like we need to spell things out for our partners what we I did was back in my production days I had them watch the videos I did. Mm, yeah. Look, this is something oh, yeah. like this. This is what it's going to look like. Yeah, yeah something is like that. Is there anything in that video that you don't particularly like? Yeah. That should be, as a performer, something that everyone does when you're asked by a, a new producer to shoot for them. You know, and yes, the producer should talk to you about what's what, what they're going to be shooting that day, but it is your responsibility to go and see their past videos because you should understand what, you know, what, what you're about to shoot, what you're about to do. And yeah, it's great if, if the producer sends you links, that's yeah. fantastic, that's really helpful. But you know, you wouldn't. Walk. Is there another way, that, like watching a video beforehand, I send video links to my, part, to my partner's actor, but um, is there anything else that somebody could do to prepare themselves for work? Like we know how to like stretch before you go play a basketball game. Watching the video, being having a clear concept of what you're doing, are there other like things I should write down that we sh should I do to prepare I feel mentally? Like something and that keeps coming up for me, and I'm gonna just put it out there, is like I don't know where you're from, but in Los Angeles we have a lot of dungeons that offer like BDSM 101 classes, and I think that a lot of people can we can Before learn. The video. Yeah. yeah, we can learn so much from like the community. I did training. BDSM I did. Community. I did no camera. Yeah. Type of things. Like if you're not sure first time, for example, we had models that would never hide up before. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, come in, we'll do no camera, just a training session, see if you if you even want to do like a stage show. Maybe requesting yeah. something like that, or <laughs> sending them to your local dungeon, and yeah. if they have 101, you know, like a BDSM 101 class, or Kink 101 class, so that they can, like, even though that's not what you do in your production company, even if you don't do BDSM and stuff, they can learn so much about consent, what they want, what they can ask for, how they feel around it. We can learn so much from that community, and I think that, you know, as well, it's a way to sort of it's a starting place. Maybe. That's good. Plus, another big problem is most of uh, you know, not everyone comes into this business because they want to. A lot of people come because they're in a certain situation in life, and this looks like uh, this is an easy money. Maybe you know, this is yeah. now. So, a lot of people get into this business already knowing they don't want to be here. Yeah. Well, that's its in and of itself. Its and that's going to trigger That's in and of itself issue. its own trauma. So, yeah. if you're already in the business and you don't want to be in it, that is going to exacerbate whatever you experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I talking over everyone? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, to, to the topic of the conversation, I think it's, it's reasonable enough for a performer to ask a production company for at least a baseline idea or storyboard of what's going on. When we do our stuff, we make sure that there's a story because we scout our models, it's for a particular thing that they're very good